Hi, I'm Dr. Prama Meehan, and in this video today, I would like to talk to you about acid reflux and the damaging effects of acid reflux. I want to share some tips on what you can do to minimize those effects on yourself. But before I get into that, I'd like to talk to you more about the actual condition and some of the contributing factors that make you more prone to having acid reflux. So what is acid reflux? Well, it's a medical condition. It's also known as heartburn, and it's also the medical condition itself is called gastroesophageal reflux disease. The acronyms are G-E-R-D, and it's often just referred to as GERD. Although it's referred to as heartburn, it has nothing to do with your heart, but the signs and symptoms are similar to that of a heart attack and heart disease. You get this burning sensation in your throat, and it tends to be very close to where your heart is, so most people refer to this as heartburn. So what happens during an acid reflux attack? What is happening with you? We have our food pipe, the esophagus. It is a tube that connects our throat to our stomach. At the base of that tube, we have a muscular valve, a sphincter, which controls the flow of food. Normally, that sphincter will open to allow food and drinks to get into your stomach, and then it will close so that the stomach contents stay in the stomach. The other time that the sphincter will open is to allow you to burp, to release some gas that may have built up in your upper GI tract. Now, sometimes that valve will become weak. And when it becomes weak, that's when stomach contents, and more importantly, stomach acid, hydrochloric acid would actually reflux or come back up into your throat and even into your mouth. This hydrochloric acid is a very, very strong acid and it can be extremely damaging when it's not in your stomach. In fact, this acid is so strong that it actually can dissolve the hardest substance in your body, your tooth enamel. Our enamel protects our teeth. It allows us to eat and drink the foods that we want without having any sensitivity. And when that gets dissolved away, that's one of the reasons why you may be experiencing a lot of tooth sensitivity. Now, unfortunately, acid reflux does affect people of all ages. So what are some of the contributing factors to acid reflux? Well, the main one is being overweight. All that excess belly fat creates a lot of pressure in your abdomen, which pushes against that sphincter, making it easier for acid to leak into your throat. Smoking. Nicotine and tobacco actually relaxes that muscular sphincter, again, allowing for acid reflux. Stress, anxiety. This will create an increased level of cortisol in your body, which is a signal to your stomach to produce hydrochloric acid. Obstructive sleep apnea. This may be a surprise to you. Research has shown that more than 50% of people with obstructive sleep apnea also experience GERD. So I actually use this as one of my screening tools when I'm screening for sleep disorders in my practice. When I'm doing my dental hygiene exam, if I see evidence of erosion, tooth wear in your mouth, and if I also see swelling at the back of your throat or an inflamed throat, I'm gonna ask you, do you snore and do you suffer from acid reflux? Quite a few people have responded yes to both of those questions, but most people will say they're taking a pill for the acid reflux and they're not doing anything about their snoring. Now in our practice, we'll ask you if you're interested, would you like to complete a sleep health questionnaire to learn if you are at risk of having a sleep disorder? The other contributing factor, well-known factor is also the food that you eat and the time that you eat it. So if you've eaten a large meal at the end of the day and sleep soon after, just that sheer volume of food in your stomach is gonna push against that sphincter and make it easier for the stomach contents to get leaked into your throat. Now your stomach also releases different volume of hydrochloric acid depending on the food that's in there so that it can break it down properly. Now, if you ate a really greasy, high fat, obviously very yummy meal, at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Those are the nights when you wake up literally feeling like your throat and your mouth is on fire because you've had such an incredible reflux of your stomach contents and your stomach acids. A really, really nasty, nasty experience. So try not to do that whenever possible. 
So we looked at some of the factors that contribute to acid reflux. Now let's talk about some of the things that you can do to prevent it or to control it and to prevent the damage to your teeth. The first and foremost and most important thing you can do is to make some lifestyle modifications. Try your best to finish your meal three hours before you go to sleep. The stomach generally needs about three hours to completely digest your food so that you can sleep more comfortably. Lose weight, exercise, reduce your stress and anxiety, connect with nature, go out for a walk, go out for a hike. Try and get your gut biome healthy. You may need the help of a naturopath or a functional medicine therapist. Sleep well. Don't ever underestimate the value and the power of a good night, well-rested sleep. Now, if you happen to experience GERD during your waking hours, please don't brush immediately. Because remember that acid is so strong, it actually weakens your enamel. It actually makes it soft. So you want to just rinse with water, wait a half an hour, let the saliva remineralize your enamel, and then brush. And when you do brush, you always want to brush with a soft bristle brush, and you want to use a toothpaste that's not very abrasive. So all these toothpaste that will whiten your teeth, that are tartar fighting, they tend to be higher on the abrasive side to try and avoid them if at all possible. Dental hygiene appointments are key because a lot of people are unaware that they do have acid reflux. Many people have something known as silent GERD, silent acid reflux. So one of the telltale signs is during a hygiene exam where I do see erosion on your back teeth or I will see that swelling at the back of your mouth. Now, if I do see erosion on your teeth, I wanna get you back and I wanna protect those teeth so they don't have further damage. So I will often put a sealant or a protective coating on those teeth to help protect those teeth for as long as we possibly can. So GERD is a medical condition, a very common medical condition that can create a lot of destruction to your teeth. It's also something that can be a side effect or a symptom of an undiagnosed sleep disorder. Now in America, every year, over 100 million prescriptions are made to treat acid reflux. Now for short-term use, I understand why you would want to have a prescription, but long-term, like, don't you think we should be looking for the cause of acid reflux rather than constantly putting a Band-Aid over the problem? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to continue to receive more oral health tips. Have a great day, everybody.